we want to host our React and Node.js application and make it accessible on the web. So we start with the Node.js backend in this episode and host it for free on Heroku. First things first, you should have Node.js installed already if you have followed the series of videos. Next, you should have a Heroku account which you can create by visiting heroku.com. So you can provide the details here to sign up or if you have an account already, you can log in. Also, you need to have Heroku CLI installed, which requires you to install Git as well. So on the Heroku CLI page, you can download the appropriate one for your operating system. Now let's visit our project on the command line. Now your project needs to be a Git repository for the hosting to work, so you can ensure that by running Git in it. So inside our project, we we'll visit the package.json file, we we'll check if all our dependencies are well listed. And as we can see, all our dependencies are here. Now at the bottom of this object, we need to specify our node version. So we create an engines key. Now for the version, we ask our command line for the value. So on the command line, we run node-v. Once we get the value, we copy and paste it. Now we need to tell Heroku how to start our application. And we will do that by creating a prog file. So inside the prog file, we specify our command for the web key and our command will be node server.js. Now the next thing we need to ensure is that we have a .ktignore file with the node models and also .env specified in it. Now inside the server.js file too, we need to ensure that we are referring to the right port. So as you can see, we are alternating between the ports provided by the process.env and port 5000, which is exactly what we are supposed to do. So once you host our application, the server will fall back to this port to run our application. Now at this point, there is one major change that we need to make. So for now, our backend will be running on a free Heroku account. But for a free Heroku account and setup, your application runs on a free dyno, which can go to sleep in about an hour if it doesn't receive any request. The dyno here is just a sort of container or virtual machine which executes our code. Once the dyno goes to sleep, our server loses the authorization by Gmail to send emails with our login credentials. Remember now in our server, we are sending email verifications and also password reset emails. So we need to make use of the OAuth approach if we really need to use Gmail. I covered that in my Node.js email video and we established that you might face some refresh token issues. You can also make use of a Heroku add-on to send your emails, but they don't usually work well for the free accounts. So for the add-ons, you need to make use of the paid account to stand a chance of having a reliable email service. So at this point, what do we do? The current workaround that I have is to make use of Hotmail or Outlook instead of the Gmail account. So we just create a Hotmail or Outlook account and replace the credentials in our code before we push it to Heroku. Now at this point, we have our new email and password that we can use in our project. So inside the .env file, we update the credentials. Now at the top of our project where we created the transporter, we need to change the service to Hotmail and the other credentials will stay the same since we've updated them in the .env file. Now at this point, we need to make a commit and push our code to Heroku. Now after the commit, we need to log into Heroku using the Heroku CLI. Now this should open up a page in the browser. So over here, we press on any key. Once on the page, we click on login. Now we can go back to the command line. Now on the command line, we see that we are logged in. Now we need to create a Heroku project using Heroku Create. Normally, Heroku Create alone should work fine, but I want to assign mine a name. So I'll make use of the remote flag here. Note that if you don't use the flag and assign it a name, the default name will be Heroku. Now the project has been created on Heroku successfully. So now we push our code to it. So we run git push production master. If you didn't assign the production, yours should be git push Heroku master. Remember the master here is the name of your branch. Now while our app is building, you remember that our project makes use of some .env values. So we need to set them in the Heroku project as well. So we visit the Heroku dashboard and open our project. Remember to take note of the name of your project. Once we are in, we click on settings. Now in the settings, we click on reveal config var. And now we create our key and value pair here. So the first one will be the email. We call it auth email. And now remember, we are using the hotmail values. Now while you are here, don't forget to add the link to your MongoDB database. Remember in our .env file, we have a link to our MongoDB database as well. Now at the overview tab, we see a list of our activities. 
and inside we can see that our build was successful. Back on the command line we should see the same. So we see that our build was successful and also the deployment is complete. Now let's quickly test in Postman to see if our server is working. So we go back to the Heroku dashboard. Over here we click on settings. We scroll down to the bottom and copy the link. Now at the domains here we copy this link. This is what we are going to use in Postman. So we create a post request. Over here we paste the link. So let's try the sign in endpoint. So as the body we pass any credentials at all. So we try sending the request. So we got something back which means that our server is up and running. So we are good and ready to build on this in the next episode.